Okay, good morning everyone. Again, this is Craig Moser of the Resource Group and we are here to uh, discuss the move from Management Reporter, which Microsoft has uh, let us know that there will be no, they will no longer be including any functional enhancements to the product. So a lot of folks are interested in what the next step is. Well, the Resource Group, we have partnered with Solver uh, and their BI360 product as one that because of its deep ties and connection to, to GP, it just seems like the logical next step. Uh, with that, I would like to go ahead and introduce Alex Geller of BI360 and our presentation today. And, and uh, Alex, if you're ready to go, let's, uh, let's go ahead and kick this off. Sounds great. Thanks, Craig. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. And what I'll do is I'll quickly um, go through the PowerPoint, and, and the PowerPoint is just going to be to illustrate our architecture, um, and then spend the majority of the time in the in the demonstration, where I'll show you specifically the reporting capabilities uh, within the BI360 suite, and then uh, we'll make sure and, and leave some time at the end for Q and A. Um, so please, you know, type in any questions you have um, inside of the chat box. Uh, and I'll make sure and, and address all of those at the end. Now, like I said, we'll keep it short, um, but just to qu you know, quickly introduce uh, the company, Solver BI360 um, is, is a core performance management tool. Uh, we're on the Gartner Magic Quadrant list for the third year, um, and that just validates us being one of the top companies in the space. Uh, and specifically, we're really the only company on the Gartner Magic Quadrant uh, with a live integration to Dynamics Great Plains. And I'll illustrate what that means uh, further in the demo. But you know, as a company, we have thousands of customers in uh, countries worldwide, um, and we're based in uh, Los Angeles. So here is, like I said, the last slide. Uh, before we really get into the product itself. You know, our suite is composed of four key components. It's reporting, which we'll spend the majority of the time on today, um, budgeting, dashboarding, and data warehousing. Now, as I'm going to go through and show you the reporting capabilities, you know, just note that as your company scales, or you, know, you want to replace Forecaster or Excel, you can later purchase and implement uh, the budgeting modules. And you know, if you want to go through and add other data sources, maybe not Great Plains, maybe you have a CRM system, other data sources into the warehouse, again, it's something you can do at a later phase. So let's go and uh, actually walk through the product itself. Uh, you know, what you'll see here is over on the left-hand side, if you follow my cursor, we have truly a live integration with Great Plains. Now, similar to FRX and Management Reporter, when you post a journal entry into Great Plains, you'll immediately see that in the reporting tool. Now, what are some of the differences, right, with, with our tool um, and, and FRX and MR? Well, primary difference is one, you know, it's all Excel based. So in terms of formatting um, and, and, you know, keeping it in Excel and ease of use, all of that is, is available and much easier for presentation quality reports. Second, you're going to be able to create reports from your subledger. So unlike uh, those tools, we're not limited to just general ledger. So if you want to go through and drill back into uh, your journal entry, into accounts payable, receivable, you'll be able to drill in. Uh, and you'll also be able to create payroll reports, sales report, any of the modules that you leverage inside of Great Plains are available. Now, what a lot of users say is Great Plains is great, but you know, in, in this world, the data sources uh, are expanding. So maybe you have a, a CRM system, you know, maybe you have a point of sale system or um, something such as a, a payroll like ADP or OT Pro. You know, what we can do is load that data into our data warehouse, and that's going to be your one central version of the truth. 
and then using the same exact Excel-based reporting tool, you, know, you can create reports that combine data uh, from GP you know, to uh, CRM to other data sources, all in one report. Now, while this is great, you know, this right here you can, dish, you can use in Excel, uh, but for your end users, you know, you're going to go through and you're going to be able to deploy all of this on the web. Um, and the key components again today are going to be reporting, and I'll show you a few dashboards, um, but from a deployment methodology, you know, everything's created in Excel, but then you can push it to the web for consumption. And then finally, just something to note, uh, but you know, not something we'll, we'll cover extensively today, if you want to add budgeting at a later stage, um, you can go through and, and do that. Or you can, needless to say, do it immediately. All right, sounds good. You know, let's get into the demo. What I want to do is start off and say, hey, you know, how is this really going to look from an end user's perspective? Um, you know, am I going to get the executive sign off, which is, hey, does it look and feel nice, right? Um, then we'll switch gears a little bit, and what I'll do is build a report from scratch. And that's where uh, the users that are currently using FRX and MR can really compare and contrast the ease of use. And then we'll finish off uh, with some of the more ad hoc reporting tools that compare to SmartList. Um, and then we also have a tool that automatically pushes out reports for you. So it sends them out in an email or saves them to a file somewhere. All right, enough talking. You know, so let's say I'm the COO of the company. Uh, I signed off on purchasing the i360 and it's all deployed. Now how am I going to get that data? Um, so what I'll do here, I'll open up a web browser. And you know, I'll go in here and go into the URL. And based on this, this is actually really important. I'm going to sign up with my uh, credentials. Based on these credentials, which are separate from um, Great Plains, you have specific security settings. And the security can get um, you know, as granular as, as account, internal entry, um, and it obviously can be ran for various departments, divisions, um, and anything else. So I'm logging in here. Um, and I'm an admin user, so I'm going to have rights to everything. Another really important thing that I'll you know, reiterate throughout the presentation, um, these are just examples, right? So you're going to be able, and we actually have about 14 uh, various vertical models, and this is our general one. So you'll be able to customize all of this. And if you're looking at it, the point is just to give you a look and feel. Uh, there's different views that can be set up, and you can customize the aesthetics. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, this carousel. And what I like about this is, you know, here you have all of the templates um, that someone uploaded for me, or maybe I uploaded myself. Um, since it's unique to the username, though, you can go in here, toggle certain ones as favorites, and then instead of scrolling through all of these guys, you can go to the favorites, and see the ones that are most relevant for you. Also, over on the left-hand side, uh, you can keep everything organized. Um, and you know, you're going to create your own hierarchy. The way we have it set up here uh, is you have a strategy. You can assign tasks. Uh, then you can go through you know, forecast the rest of the year, uh, budget, which uh, for the folks that are later implementing you know, wouldn't see this aspect of it. But you would automatically go in um, and you know, perhaps see the analysis and reporting aspect of it, um, perhaps see you know, if you create a separate folder for consolidations, however you want to organize it. Now for our example, you know, I'll go in here, scroll through um, some of the dashboards. Uh, and you can see, by the way, these are organized. So it goes from um, benchmarking, showing you how you're doing compared to other companies. Uh, maybe executive giving you a holistic overview of the business, something for the CFO, um, and so on. And then, you know, while there are a lot of companies doing stuff like this, what I really haven't seen is companies combining uh, visualizations with formatted reports that clearly the finance and accounting team needs. And you know, here's a PL, balance sheet, um, cash flow. And things that you can get out of MR 
But then as we continue scrolling through, and these are things you clearly can't. I mean, this is a sales report that I can run, a receivable, payable, um, HR. Here we even took Google Analytics, plugged it into our warehouse, and did a uh, website analytics report. Okay? So much, much more scalability in terms of what you're reporting. And just to kind of show you, um, since we have majority finance and accounting folks um, on the call, you know, I'll go and open up a, a profit and loss okay, and expand this out a little bit. Uh, and I can see you know, it was ran for corporate US. It was ran for the month of September. Uh, we can see the revenues and the expenses. Now, what I find extremely useful is if you go in ad account 40035 um, inside of Great Plains, when you click a button, that account is going to automatically appear here. And you probably are wondering how does that work. Um, when I built the report, you'll see that I used dynamic ranges. So I'll specify, hey, make sure and grab all these accounts in case I ever add a new one. Um, so you don't have to go back and hard code anything. And that's just one example of how you know, we really thoughtfully automated a lot of the functionality that you probably do right now in, in MR and FRX. So I look at this, you know, what can I do? Um, first, I can drill into any of the data. So if I'm not sure why this is 7.5, you know, I can right click. Um, and right now I'll drill into summary. But in a second, I'll go and show you how to drill back into the sub ledger. Okay? Um, you know, and then what's funny is when we built this, a lot of users said, hey, this is great, but I actually want to push it back into Excel. Uh, so we have a button here, you know, um, that you can click. It provides a QR reader. Um, and by the way, we have mobile apps both in Google Play and in the Apple Store for consumption and drilling out into these reports. Okay, so really important note. Uh, but what I will do here is go in and I'll just download this back into Excel. Right. So maybe I'll just say PNL uh, yeah. underscore testing uh, for a webinar. Click save. You can see that the download was completed, and that's advantageous because you know maybe I'm, I'm getting on a plane or something, and I want to further analyze uh, that PNL in Excel or do some what-if analysis. Um, what I can do here now is go in, you know, and see that it was ran for corporate US, it was ran for September. Um, and by the way, you know, here's the kind of the what-if analysis that I was mentioning. Maybe your product revenue is actually going to grow to 950,000. When I click enter, all the data here changes, right? And that's because these formulas, okay, um, were all created in Excel. So all of the formulas that you're used to, okay, were retained in the spreadsheet. Again, you're probably saying, how? <laughs> um, I'll show that, right, when I built the report and then you know, push it up to the web. But before I do that, let's say this is great, but what if I want to run it for a different company or a different month? What you do back on the portal, and this is really the entire purpose of our tool, um, so I want to make sure this concept is crystal clear. You know, what you're doing with our tool is you're going and saying, hey, you know, I want to run it for maybe corporate Asia instead. And this is where I'll pause for a second to mention two things. One, this is where security kicks in. You know, so if I'm an exec that's maybe limited to just seeing corporate U.S. and corporate Asia, those are going to be the only two companies I'll be able to select from. Um, and then second note, I'm just using company here as, a, as an example. For you, it could be your department, your um, program, your division, maybe your product line, whatever is relevant to you. Company is just an example here. So I'll pick Asia, um, and then maybe what I want to do is say, hey, it's actually no longer September, it's October. Uh, click a button, and I see a brand new report. And also, by the way, speed um, is going to be a significant improvement because when you run it, actually in the queries, you, you know, over here, uh, you can run men, many reports at once. And then you, you know, open it up, and you can clearly now see that it ran for corporate Asia and for the month of October. Um, over on the left-hand side, you know, if you want to compare them, you could. I mean, this is a report we just ran. This is the one we ran 17 you know, minutes ago. Um, and so on. 
And I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here, but you know, high level, this is kind of how it, um, you know, how it, it, it looks and feels. Now, what's funny is we show this P&L, and a lot of executives always say, "Hey, go actually back and you know, let me see it. Let me see a dashboard. Um, numbers are great, but how does my revenue trend?" So what you can do is scroll down to the bottom, maybe where I have the supporting um, revenue dashboards. And you, know, you can look at a dashboard like this, where if I expand it, um, this has you know, product sales, service sales, maintenance, because we're a software company. But again, you're going to customize this. Um, and the point is, you know, if I care about a specific department or company, um, I can click and I can see all of the data underneath your change as well. Um, and you'll you know, build this on your own logic. So here's a pie chart, and maybe we're saying, hey, why did corporate, corporate Canada have 12%? What quarter um, contributed to that? Your execs can go and say, oh, well, you know, clearly you can see that 31% of the revenue came from the fourth quarter. Okay? So you know, powerful dashboards. Um, again, you know, the power of not just loading uh, Great Plains data. Here we actually took data from Yahoo Finance and pumped it into our warehouse. And we can see how our company is doing, maybe some industry averages, uh, two competing companies in the space, right? Um, and next year, instead of you know, recreating something, you go in and pick a different year. Um, and, and by the way, you know, a lot of companies definitely do these dashboards. And, and uh, you, know, you can go in, you can see heat maps. Where we differentiate, we're more tailored for, for finance. Uh, with us, you know, you can click and you see the receivable change, and this is great. You know, we can see this as an outlier, uh, but a lot of the visualization products, the conversation really stops there. Whereas with BI 360, if you're looking at this receivable, you know, you can scroll down now um, and actually see a report. Maybe a, a you know, in this case, um, or an, an AP report that supports that. Okay, so here's an example. Sorry, I actually open up AR. Um, you know, we can see this was the outlier, and now we can see the document IDs, the document dates, the amounts, um, and we can even click and drill um, into an, uh, the invoice itself, okay? All from, you know, this platform, which is really useful. So here, it, it went through um, and opened up the invoice, okay? Now, I um, want to take a step back, and, you know, maybe you're, you guys are saying, hey, this is great, but you know, where do I actually go and build a report um, such as this, right, such as the HR and payroll report? Um, and that's what I'll show you next. But before I do, you know, last thing to, to mention and what you could do after um, you're done implementing the reporting piece, you, know, you can add on budgeting to our software. Um, and this webinar is not focused on this, uh, but just spending two minutes because I do think it's, it's a critical part of our suite. Um, you know, here's it. you can do personnel planning, uh, forecasting, and the way it looks very similar to reporting because you start by creating a report and then add some functionality and turn it into an input form. Um, you know, you pick your company, department, your month, um, you know, everything in yellow. You can store data to, um, and then you can add line item details um, and a lot of functionality. Sorry about that. Give me uh, one sec here. And, uh, and it froze. Sorry about that. All right, there you go. So you know, getting back into uh, the portal here, same place, going back, right? Um, here's an example maybe of a budget where I want to go in and store my operational expenses. Okay? Um, open this up. Same template that I just showed before internet froze there for a second. You know, pick your company, pick a department. Um, by the way, here I'm picking a period. You can also set it to auto refresh, um, so it automatically gives you the current month. Uh, and the point here is, you know, 12 months of data to store uh, for next year. Over on the right hand side, nine months of actual coming from Great Plains, and, and three months of forecast from a different template. And you could go in, input data. Um, you could right click. Um, use some of the spreading methodologies. So instead of you know typing into every single cell, you could do something like this and say, "Hey, give me a uh, you know take the history of that account, apply it, spread it a few percentage points, 
click apply, um, and now it increases every single month a few percentage points. Um, also, you know, if you wanted to add some sort of line item details, um, say for special events, what exactly do you spend money on? Um, you know, you can go through and add comments here. So, uh, event or webinar, okay? Um, and you can all you can add comments to any of this too. So, um, you know, full budgeting with workflow uh, that could be available um, to 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 start having control uh, of your budgeting process. And then after you're done, you know, you store that data now back into the database. Um, and if you want to compare actual to budget, um, you just go into this, you know, budgeting reports. I'm not going to store this back. Go into this budget reports um, and can do like an actual to budget comparison. Okay. All right. Point is, you have um, reporting and budgeting in one place, and you can add budgeting um, at a later phase. Now, I'll go back and say, hey, you know, really compare this to FRX and MR. Build a report from scratch. Okay. And this is now more from the perspective of um, you know maybe the accountant or the uh, finance person uh, building this from scratch. And let me go through and open Excel, okay? And when I open Excel, what I see is two tabs: BI three hundred and sixty planning, um, if you want to add budgeting, and BI three hundred and sixty reporting. Now, if I did have an existing Excel template, I can select New Current and Continue Building. In our example here, we will select New Blank. Now, as this opens, um, you know what I see is this is truly Excel. Uh, this isn't a lookalike. So all of the formulas that you're used to, you can leverage. Now I'll select um, you know the Great Plains Fabricam test database that Microsoft provides. Uh, but for you guys, when you go and select your own Great Plains system, everything on the left hand side, okay, is going to be translated um, into simple business terms. So really the point of this, hopefully you guys will see, is it doesn't require anyone technical, right? Um, Non-technical users should be able to create all of their reports. Now, left-hand side, you know, finance, yeah, that's like what MR and, and FRX offers. But you also see all of the other modules that you leverage. So here's a payroll, um, you know, here's an HR module, inventory. Whatever you guys use will automatically appear here. And again. That's because we're really the only tool that has that live integration with Great Plains, because that's the majority of our, those are the majority of our customers. Um, now, just to make sure we do compare the apples to apples, you know, I'll go build a report from finance, um, but all the concepts that I'm going to show you are transferable across all these modules, right? So I can use them to build like a payroll report. Um, what I want to do here is go in and let's call, let's just create a quick uh, trial balance and maybe right below here I want to say this is the account, you know, this is the um, description of that account and let's just say you know, we want to do a year date to a last year to date comparison and a variance. Just, you know, typing this into Excel and I'm clearly doing so incorrectly. <laughs> um, maybe bold this. Like I'm not going to spend time formatting, but you know, important for you guys to know, every everything in terms of formatting happens in Excel. You don't have to learn some sort of proprietary tool um, as you do with with uh, the competitors, right? Um, and then you go and expand this out. Great. Um, now I'm ready to actually build the report, right? So what are you paying for with the software? Uh, let me show you. So over here on the left-hand side, all of um, the, the, the actual summary details um, are in place. What I'll do is open up summary, um, and you know, here's the account string, the one that's in Fabricam. So I have an account, department, division. Um, this will be your own account, your own segments. And what I'll do here is I'll drag and drop account onto the row. Now as I do that, the software asks, like, hey, you know, do I want to create that on the row or the column? In my example, it's going to be the row because I want those um, to go down. Now, 
what I want to do is go into my layout editor, okay, and cherry pick the accounts I actually want. So if this was, um, you know, P&L, I would just pick out my revenues. In my example, I'll select all of the accounts, except my unit accounts, right? Now, here is the important part. When I showed you that report and said, hey, if you add a new account, it was going to automatically appear um, in BI360, this is why, right? It's because I use ranges. So when I go in and add account, you know, right here, 8555 in Great Plains, it is going to automatically appear on the report. And as good practice, you know, what I probably want to do is go in here and say, hey, um, what happens if you add a new account? You, know, you want to go and say maybe 8999, okay, in case I add a new account. Click OK. Um, I'm basically done with the report. The rest, you know, hopefully you're seeing it's pretty logical. Um, you go and drag and drop account description, uh, and you scroll down, make some room for myself, and uh, period change, which is the activity, right, into year date, and last year to date. Uh, the formulas is just a regular Excel formula. It's a year to date minus last year to date. Now, really the last part of this report, um, before I'm ready to either push it up to the web or run it in Excel, uh, the last part is I somehow need to differentiate year date from last year date. And that's the second aspect, which is a column level. Okay, so I go in, I can add functions. These are, by the way, all pre-built, but you can add your own as well. Um, and what I'll do is drag and drop year date here, scroll down, and drag and drop last year to date the column E. Okay. Um, you can always change, by the way, the columns. That doesn't affect it. Um, you know, maybe I want to change it to just abbreviate. Uh, again, formatting, all Excel, so if I want to do this accounting, um, you know, maybe I want to add a total here. Uh, I could use Excel formula. I could just also use a, a, a quick, um, you know, summation formula that, that we created. And, and that's it. I mean, I'm basically, you know, really done with my report. Um, I'll add some functionality in a second, but for now, let's see how, um, how it actually came out. Now, Again, right, what I'm doing right now is I'm in the mode of someone creating this from scratch, okay? The business user, you know, they're not going to sit here creating it. All they're going to do is go in and say, hey, you know, I want to see this report now for um, maybe, you know, July of 2014. Click run um, and see that data, okay? And here I see the accounts. Um, the descriptions, you know, year date, last year date, amount, along with the variance, expanded on the row. Um, this is all protected, by the way. Um, so if your end user goes and does something like this and you know, deletes some of the, the, the rows, all you have to do is click run again, and the report will reappear. Um, and obviously, you know, because I picked those ranges, if you go and add account, let's say 1527 in Great Plains, okay, it would automatically appear here as a new row. Now, what else can I do here? Um, I kind of mentioned that you can drill back into the subledger. So here, let me go and show you. Um, and this is probably where a lot of the accountants um, in the room are going to have smiles. You can go in and drill back into uh, the detail. And now you can see um, the full account string. Uh, we handle multi-currency, by the way, for those of you guys that, that have that. Um, customer number, customer name, right? Subledger info ultimately. Um, here we see the vendor name, batch number, uh, original document number, reference, um, debit credit, and anything else you need. Now the question that always comes up um, in, in live demos is, hey, what if I want to build my own, right? What if I just want to see, let's say, uh, this this vendor? Um, Absolutely, right? You can do that. You can easily create your own custom ones that when you go in and right click, it'll give you the ability to drill into whatever you select. Okay? So really important to differentiate between the users, by the way. You know, design, someone that builds it for consumption, like your, your COO. And you can decide, hey, 
one, do I want to go in here and upload that to the portal? And that's what I first started showing you. Um, or, you know, maybe I don't want the portal at all. I just want to keep it real simple. Um, replace FRX and MR. You know, I want to have my user just click a button here, pick a month, um, and get results. Now, let's take it one step further um, and say, you know, not just period. I want my end user to be able to select a you know, division, let's say, right? So what I'll do here is I'll go back, drag and drop, division, and that's really the third aspect. There's row, column, and sheet, right? Which is the entire report um, is going to give you the specific division that you select. Uh, then and here, all you, what you should see, the formatting is all, um, you know, just pressing buttons. You don't have to learn any sort of coding um, to be able to use their software. And I'll say parameter, create new. Um, you can always change this name out. You can change the style, whatever you like here. You know, do we want drop down checklist? Um, and last step, you know, what I will do here is I'll create the sheet per value. Um, pretty powerful little button. Uh, click OK. And now I'm done with my report. Formatting, maybe what I want to do is just add a, a little room. Um, and I actually want to see the, 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 the description on the report itself. Okay. Great. What I just did now, um, your business user goes in and they click a button and maybe they specifically want to see sales data. Click OK. Run it. Um, and now they just get you know data for sales, right? Um, if they say, hey, great, um, but I want to see now consulting training, click OK and run this. Now they just see data for consulting training. Now you saw me press that little button that says create sheet per value. And what that does is if they actually go in and say, well, I see sales and admin, those three um, you know, divisions, when I click this run button, it's actually going to give you a separate tab for each one. So I gave you, you know, a tab for administration, another one for sales, and yet another one for consulting and training. Okay. Um, you know, all with the ability to go in here and drill back into um, the detail level. Now, what else can you do here? You're kind of getting the, the point. Um, no, you can build any subledger reports. I mean, here's just kind of a few more um, examples here. You know, let me go out of this report that I built. And by the way, we have a lot of predefined reports uh, for, for Great Plains. Now, here's all of the various um, templates we have. And maybe what I want to do, here's some of, um, some of my, my favorites. You can go back in. Um, maybe I want to do like a you know, AR and AP report. Um, by the way, we also have allocation reports. Um, definitely a lot of stuff once you start digging through these templates. And these are already pre-built, so it's really just dragging and dropping your own fields and immediately seeing with your own data. Um, you know, here's the previous account that me, you know, you can go in. You can see that nothing's hard-coded, right? And that's because all of the data um, is going to display, again, based on the parameters that you select, right? Um, so when I go in here, you know, pick out, um, sorry about that, when I go in here and say, hey, you know, I want to see a specific uh, vendor, okay? So I'll pick my vendors and maybe uh, my customers. Here, I'll just go wild card, select all of them. And what I'll see is when I run this, um, these AP and, uh, and AR tabs are going to fill up with information from your database. Okay? And then I can go in and you know, maybe just type in the, the vendor that I want. Um, I didn't spell that right there. But you know, once I type it in correctly, it goes in and gives you an AP. Um, so if I expand this, you know, I can see the vendor name, the due date, the document date, and the amount okay, on any of these guys. And on the AR aging, you know, same thing, where you can see the document name, customer number, customer name, um, and so forth. Okay. Uh, maybe just since uh, we're doing the reporting piece, a few more um, examples to illustrate here. 
You know, um, here's AP to uh, general ledger reconciliation. Uh, also, you know, <laughs> very useful and really not something you can do with with uh, MR. So when I go in and um, again run this, what it's going to do is give you the full account strings, the original doc number, document date. Um, it's going to actually reconcile that with the uh, with the vendor for that. Okay, um, so go in. There's a little little delay here in the on the GoTo meeting. Uh, yeah, I go in, select my posting, select my periods, okay? select my vendors, and okay? I'll just select all of them. Uh, click a button, um, and then what that does, right? Pulls in the account string, pulls in the original doc number, and when I scroll down, um, you, know, you can see that it reconciles it directly to the vendor. Okay, so yeah, really useful if you're just going in and saying, oh, I want to see advanced office systems running. Um, and now, you know, it just shows you advanced office systems clearly. A um, few more templates before we get into something um, a little bit more exciting. Maybe just one HR template. Um, for those of you guys that use the HR module inside of um, Great Plains, for the ones that don't, again, remember, what you can do is you can roll in your Ulti Pro or your ADP or any other payroll system into our data warehouse. Um, and by the way, the data warehouse is where you're also going to maintain hierarchies, um, eliminations, allocations, um, and multi-currency for those of you guys that have that. Okay. All of the concepts, again, the exact same, you know, you built this once and then you're able to reuse um, the reports over and over, right? So you pick out your departments here. Um, you know, you can pick out your types. You run it, um, and you see by department. It gives you the employee ID, the first last name, the supervisors, the reason they're inactivated anymore, the day they started, last day they worked, and how many employees by um, you know, the, the um, departments. With a little chart in Excel, and um, so you know, just kind of a sim simple GP reports. Um, what else can you do? You know, instead of going into Excel or instead of going into the web, um, you can set them up as a report library in our tool. So what this is, assignments, kind of like a library for all of your reports. Um, you know, this would probably be more for the people who decide not to deploy the portal. You know, instead of uh, going through that URL, you know, they can go in here um, and just see you know, all of the templates that um, are assigned to them. Here's kind of one, one last report that um, <laughs> I always show for any of you guys that have been on the demo just because I think it's, it's very useful. This is kind of, you know, instead of going through and, and um, picking one tab at a time, let's go in and just create a board package, right? And you can see again, um, nothing's hard coded here. What this is going to do is actually automatically, you know, give you your top ten vendor payments. If I ever wanted to switch it, I could. Okay, um, you know, the PNL doesn't say anything right now, right? It's in essence all gibberish, and that's because all of this, okay, is going to fill up with data, and it's all going to roll into a news tab, um, and this is going to fill up with words based on the data, which is ultimately driven on the parameters that you select, right? So your business manager goes in and says, hey, I want to see corporate US, or you know, I just want to see a department or a division. Um, I want to see actuals compared to a budget. And maybe instead of um, you know, October here, I want to actually see September. Clicks a button, um, and all of the tabs now roll with information. By the way, you can kind of see the speed here. I mean, it's taking a lot of data, right? Um, and this kind of report, um, you know, is taking 12 seconds to run, right? Um, now it says, hey, corporate US, because that's the company that picks, he's great improvement in the month of September. Let me close out of here. Uh, shows you how profitable you were, uh, explains your top line, your customers, your products, who we owe money, and who owes us money. We scroll down, and we can kind of see, um, you're probably asking, where do these you know, words come from? 
and they just come from if statements in Excel, right? Where it says, hey, if you're below a certain percentage, say the word weak, right? If you're above, say moderate, or even greater, say the word great. Point is, right, as the data changes, okay, um, and let's say you have a month that you don't do that well, these words are going to change without you having to manually do anything. Okay? Um, dashboard, just a chart of your data. But again, nice because every time your debt equity ratio changes, you don't have to create a chart in Excel. Uh, trend, so because I picked September, nine month rolling trend, PL, um, which you know, I just build a trial balance, but all I'd have to do is just say, hey, I want revenues, and they would give me my revenue account. Okay, expenses. You know, you can use the groupings um, if, if if you want in Excel. That gives you the full account string. Um, yeah, you can use conditional formatting here in Excel for September. Um, and now, by the way, I showed you that you can expand on the row. You can also expand on the column, right? So because I picked September, this gave you nine months of actual data. Okay, and that can be expanded by department by division, uh, program, whatever you want, you can see on the column level as well. Um, here's cash flow statement. Uh, yeah, things you can do in MR, right, except this is um, clearly much nicer. Um, but here are things you clearly can't, right, like charts in Excel, sales data, where you see your top uh, customers' products that automatically change as they naturally change. Uh, you can go and say, hey, I want to see, you know, maybe this, this uh, customer, Here's the salespeople that sold to her. Here are the dates. Here's the quantity, um, and you know, maybe the unit price that they sold to her. Um, payment data. Um, so here's your vendor payments, where again you can click and see the transaction dates and receivables. Right. Um, same concept here is with my trial balance. If I go in, Castle and Resort is no longer in the tenth place. Maybe there's another vendor that uh, you know, supersedes it you'll automatically see that without having to manually do anything, okay? All right, so I know we have about 15 minutes left, so uh, five minutes to show you uh, the ad hoc functionality before we open it up for, um, you know, for, for, for uh, Craig to explain pricing um, and for me to answer some questions. And, and the last thing I wanted to show, and hopefully this is clear, you know, this right now is deployed in Excel, Okay, that's option number one. Option number two, you go in here and you upload this report to the portal, right? Still dynamic where your users select those parameters, but now they're accessing it on the web with those dashboards. And then option three, um, you know, what you could do if you want to just deploy everything via Excel, you really don't want them to see dashboards um, or, excuse me, um, you know, or have access on the web, you could use our publisher module. What this does just automates the otherwise manual push. Um, you know, you set up the subscribers that are going to be receiving um, the reports, and the security is both Active Directory and Windows Single Sign-On. By the way, for our, um, all of BI 360, all right? You can set up names here, um, and then after you set up subscribers, you set subscriptions for them. So name is what's going to appear in the um, you know, subject line of the email. Maybe we got month end reports. This is what's going to appear in the description. Uh, these are for X, Y, Z. And then you go through and you add um, the specific reports, right? So maybe you know, I want to add this one, this one, great. Um, you know, add those to the templates. Um, and then select my vendors here. So I always maybe want those, you know, to send out specifically for, um, you know, these, these vendors, great, click OK. Um, and then also, you know, for this posting period, uh, what I can do is just say current, and it's always going to give you the current period, or maybe minus one, right? <laughs> um, and then last part here, I, you know, maybe I, I want, instead of sending this in Excel, I actually want this converted into a PDF, um, and I want this emailed out to, you know, any of the people that I selected. And then last step is I set a date and time for this thing to push it out. Okay. So very useful tool. Um, last step, because I know um, I actually saw a comment come in and that, that said, hey, what about that smart list builder? Here's our um, you know, report composer tool. And uh, very simple. Uh, and I'll, I'll do this in uh, 
just a few minutes explain the, the concept of it. Um, it's really just you know, three main uh, steps to developing your ad hoc queries. By the way, side note, you know, everything that I'm showing here you could do in the Excel um, add-in. This is just more for, hey, you know, maybe I want to see when an employee's birthday is, um, if you keep that information in, in a system, or I want to see what my revenues are trending like. Something like that's a quick answer, not a formatted report uh, you can do here. Um, I've been using finance, so let's just go and, and do something else, maybe the purchasing module here. Uh, three steps, right? You drag and drop fields into the white space, step one. Step two, you filter the data, and step three, you organize. Um, I'll go and say, hey, here, I want to see my maybe you know vendor with name. Great. Um, I want to go in and see the document date, document number, due date, you know, whatever you need here. Um, maybe the document amount and um, perhaps just the period, right? When I click this button, it gives me all the information that I have in my database. Okay? Um, but I don't want to see all the information, right? I have a bunch of data here from 2013. Um, you know, I have a bunch of data from 2017. Maybe I just want to see the first few months of 2014. So what I do is I filter that data set. I drag and drop posting periods, um, and I'll just say, hey, I want to see the first, I don't know, four months of 2014. Click refresh, and the data set now just gives me those months. And last step here, I can organize it. Um, so if I want to see the, you know, months expanded, I can. Um, and then if I go in and say, oh, I actually want to see it all the way up to July, click refresh, and you can see here's just the month that the data happens to be in the database. If I want to organize and group the vendors and add some totals here, um, all of that, you know, I can easily do here. Okay. Um, so that that's really it, you know, just kind of a simple ad hoc reporting tool. Everything else, the concept that I showed you is applicable to everything, right? So if I instead want to see like a uh, few vendors, drag and drop, you know, click and say, hey, I want to see this guy, this guy, and maybe you know these three vendors. Click refresh. Great, see that data. If I want now, I can expand and see the three vendors side by side. Okay, so pretty powerful tool. Uh, once you're done with it, you, know, you could export to Excel, you could export into a PDF, or um, you could actually go in and export into our report designer, which I uh, built the trial balance in, and then same uh, reporting tool, right? Um, you can now build this into a formatted report. So again, all of these, you know, you don't have to purchase their add-on modules, um, but you know, since it's a demonstration and I think that they're very flexible tools, um, I thought I'd be doing an injustice if I didn't show these guys. Okay. So, yeah. Same thing now, except it's just a um, reporting tool that you saw. So everything's nice and connected. And that's really the benefit, by the way. Like, Everything here is connected, right? So if I want to go in now and add into a budgeting template, I add some functionality and turn it into a budget form. Okay. All right, so that's you know really all I had. Um, just to summarize, kind of what we looked at today, uh, we didn't spend any time on just I showed you one template on budgeting quickly, uh, but what I did show is you know from a deployment perspective, you can get everything on the web if you like. Okay for dashboards, for the reports on the web, so you don't need a Citrix or VPN in or anything like that. Um, then I went in and actually built out a report from scratch, so you hopefully you can see what's easy to use. Uh, then I showed you a few of the canned reports that we have. Um, and I finished off by showing you the tool that pushes those reports out to end users and just our ad hoc quick reporting tool. All right, so based on that, I want to pass this over actually to um, to Craig to kind of go through uh, the pricing that's available for, um, for, uh, for, for participants on this webinar. Right. And thank you so much, Alex. Great job. Um, I think everybody can agree that when it comes to financial statements, AMR is a little bit limited and BI 360 takes it just to the next level. Um, it's really quite impressive. Uh, so if you go ahead and move to the next slide, Alex, um, we'll, we'll talk about this. We have a couple of different scenarios for businesses, depending on the number of users and the number of, uh, of people that are involved in the reporting process. So this is uh, <clears throat> the first package talks, uh, we've got a total of five users, 
and the way BI 360 is is structured is you have power users versus end users, and that has to do with report creation. Uh, but as you can see here, this is for GL reporting only, which again is just a the direct comparison to management reporter. Software and the enhancement and support for the BI360 tool runs just a, it's a little bit less than $3,500. Uh, the implementation services, as you'll see, we've got kind of a wild card there, uh, simply because everybody's environment is a little bit different and a little bit uh, a little different structure to it. Uh, but as a sort of a rule of thumb, if you will, um, a one-to-one -one correlation between the, the software and implementation services will get you close. Uh, oftentimes, the services are a little bit less, um, but for the for the sake of this conversation, I think that'll get us close. Um, second package is a little more inclusive. Uh, this has one power user and ten end users. Uh, but again, this is for all the GP modules. You can see the price there is just a shade under eighty two hundred dollars. Uh, and then the third package, which is really the, the more inclusive of, of the, the three options, and this does include a 15% discount for one power user and 10 users, <clears throat> you're just a shade over $15,000. Um, but again, with each one of these scenarios, uh, we would want to go ahead and scope in the implementation services so we could provide a very accurate quote. So with that, um, Alex, we did have one question, and Mary was wondering, if you could copy existing FRX report design into BI360 instead of creating the same reports from scratch. Yeah, we actually do have an FRX converter tool um, that does exactly that. Um, yeah, that said, that's where I always recommend a consultant um, and, and, and the resource group has trained and certified consultants on BI360 to at least spend it a few hours with you just to make sure you can't like significantly increase the efficiency of your reports um, by rebuilding. Uh, but if you know they're pretty straightforward, like a PNL trial balance balance sheet, you could use our um, FRX converter to push those out. Great. Okay. Hopefully, Mary, that that answers your questions. Um, for the for the other folks, are there any other questions that that we'd like to pose to Alex while we have them on the line? I'm not seeing any any additional questions. So, Alex, maybe you did such a great job; you have answered all of their questions. Um, yeah, or you know, if it, it just last thing I want to address, you know, everything here was just kind of a, a general demo. We are happy if you um, you know follow up with uh, your account rep at at the resource group. We're happy to do a, a personalized demo just to um, walk you through all of these at a, at a slower pace. Uh, I know I showed you a lot of different tools, and you know it can be slightly overwhelming. Um, but I just did want to illustrate that hey, you know, you could really scale into being a data-driven company with our tool, um, and not just you know replace FRX or MR. So hopefully I did that. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, uh, Jana has a question. Uh, can you create any report in Excel that you can create that you can create in GP? Can you create a, um, just to make sure I understand the question correctly, can you create a report in Excel? Like, can you pull from any module in Great Plains? Um, yeah, the answer is yes. You know, it, it, ours in Excel add-in, so you can use all the formatting and formulas that you use in Excel, except now, you know, instead of going in and, and hard coding a bunch of rows or cells, um, you're using our functionality to automate that. Um, so I'm not sure I completely understood the question, um, but the answer is any reports, any of the data in Great Plains is available for um, reporting with our tool. Um, and you can use our you know, row, column, and sheet filters that I showed you um, to automate um, the, the building process, which then you can distribute to end users via the web or Excel or the tool that I show that pushes out reports. Great. Okay. Oh, and then John has a question. Uh, how much more is pricing for adding a CRM source or payroll source? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, we uh, the lo initial load process is um, 
going to be technical, right? Because that's a, a full extract transform load, and that's the case with any tools in the marketplace. Um, after the data is loaded into the warehouse, you know, non-technical users can build hierarchies off of it. They can add dimensions. They can model it basically, and then they can build, build reports off of it. So to answer your question, um, you know, what we really have to do is understand exactly what you're loading in. Um, and you know, it's typically just a few hours per module um, for for you know, AD, for your ADP system or or any other payroll. Uh, but again, it, it it does depend on a case by case. So that's where a consultant would have to give you an estimate. Right. Great. Great. Great question. Thanks, John. <clears throat> are there are there any more questions before we? I, I see we're nearing the end of the hour, and I want to be mindful of of people's time. Um, if for some reason you have a question, uh, oh, I'm sorry, John has another question. So more of an install cost than a licensing cost. Uh, I suspect you're talking about the bringing in a CRM CRM source or a payroll source. Yeah, it, so with CRM, we actually have a live integration built too. Um, you know, so I'm assuming you're saying you know, Microsoft CRM for Salesforce, we have a connector. Um, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, you license the data warehouse, and then whatever you want to bring in from there, that's consulting. Uh, oh, and Mary has another question. Is there a way that we can play around with this program before purchasing? Um, and I suspect more of a of a sandbox scenario. Um, you know, let's the, the issue there is is the answer is yes. Um, but let's let's do a call to define the scope of what you're trying to um, you know kind of see with it. Because with any tool, uh, you do need some training, right? So um, you know, we used to just kind of give it out, let people play with it, but Ultimately, they had questions, and they kind of went back to our support and consultants that are billable, right? So, the issue there is if we define a scope, I'm happy to walk you through um, the tool in your environment. Um, so, in short, the answer is yes, uh, but let's let's follow up and define the the, the parameters of that yes. Yeah, makes makes perfect sense. Yeah, be turning someone loose with a car that had never driven a car before, I suspect, is the less likely scenario. Okay. Well, with that, again, I see that we're now at 11 o'clock, so um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, Craig Mosier, at the resource group, or my colleague, Holly Miller-Jones, Holly Miller and we'll make sure that we get the answers back to you just as quickly as possible. With that, thank you all for, for your time today, um, and we look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Thanks so much, Alex. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.